I think we are ready to start this event. Hello everyone online and on site. My name is Alex. I'm the project manager at Global Point. And on behalf of our association, I would like to welcome you to today's event, during which we will be talking about uh, transparency in the Finnish art and culture of a few, not all of them, few Finnish art and culture institutions and by saying we actually we are not talking our guest speaker is going to be talking our guest is Romeo Kodra who is a visual artist cultural researcher curator and uh, you have so many titles but I will let you introduce yourself and um, Yes, if you have any questions, please write them in the chat. We will answer them in the end. And then on site people, if you have any questions, I guess feel free to just raise your real hands. And without further ado, I welcome Romeo. Okay. Thank you, thank you, Alex. And uh, yeah, it's uh, good uh, to start um, to to thank some people, especially you in uh, Globart Point, as well as the people that I interviewed for this uh, booklet. Um, without these people, this uh, booklet, of course, uh, uh, couldn't exist, or at least not 67 pages. Um, uh, I, 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 I wrote this book because it's, um, first of all, is... Uh, uh, about my my interest, which is uh, institutional critique, and uh, as a practice, artistic practice, and uh, institutional theory, especially related to art and cultural institutions. Um, uh, I. I try to to maintain a sort of uh, coherence between my my research uh, practice, uh, my artistic practice, but also as a um, cultural operator or manager sometimes to maintain a sort of uh, certain coherence. And uh, this is uh, always related uh, with the idea of institutionalization and deinstitutionalization. Um, what does this mean? Uh, this means that um, um, this this concept is um, of deinstitutionalization. Um, to me, it comes uh, from the readings of uh, Michel Foucault and uh, also uh, Félix Guattari. But uh, to, to mention like sort of uh, uh, popcorn culture philosophy, I would mention uh, um, from Shawshank Redemption, there is a prisoner that is uh, institutionalized. It's called by Morgan Freeman. And this person, when comes out from the prison after 40 or 50 years, cannot leave because it's institutionalized. And uh, he killed himself. So this is the institutionalization. Of course, I'm not writing for these uh, extreme cases, but it's still good to practice deinstitutionalization, 
not to be uh, recognized according to the institutions we live in. But this is difficult. It's not easy. It's not about uh, classical institution, what we have in mind. The first human institution and the most natural one is the language. The language is the first it is institution, which is something natural. So is in within us. And uh, to deinstitutionalize is very difficult. But speaking about art practice, art goes beyond the language. So for this is interesting for me. From a practice, artistic practice point of view, from a research, like cultural research, and also um, as uh, in terms of management. Um, this booklet is not for institutions. This is for people that work within or without from outside institutions. So is first of all for the people that do not want to be institutionalized as in the sense that I mentioned before. So for these people that want to maintain a sort of distance from the institution, Mm. I, I remember when I um, started to write the, the article, I was thinking about what, what is, how, how, to, how to, to, to write it, how to start. And of course, the first, the first uh, thing related with the institution is the language. So the first institution. And exactly the uh, way how was the summit, the art summit of Global Art Point with uh, people speaking was that first uh, started to speak for the strategies for the future people from the institutions, within the institutions. And only one uh, artist that was invited, that was not part of representing an institution, started as spoke like the order was the last to speak. And this somehow for me was like a very um, uh, immediate, because the language is the first uh, institution and the people were speaking about art strategies and the artists spoke at the end. So I, I thought, okay, it's a good point to, to, to distance myself from the Globe Art Point that commissioned the, the article and to, to have a critical point of view towards the event itself. And it's good because that made sense with the all other interviews that I did. Uh, so what, what does this mean? That in the strategies of the institutions that uh, all the people that were invited, uh, that is good to mention, by the way, was uh, Maya Lumenpuro. Uh, senior Ministerial Advisor and Cultural Affairs of the Ministry of Education and Culture of Finland was Alexi Malmberg from Helsinki Municipality, as well as uh, a General Manager of uh, Helsinki Philharmonic Orchestra, Johanna Tukanen, uh, Head of Cultural Service in Oulu Municipality, uh, Helia Francilla. Uh, communication director at Kone Foundation, and was Anastasia Trisna as uh, artist and uh, 
based in Helsinki. Um, of course, I interviewed other people like uh, Kale Korhonen, like for more information that uh, came out during the interview that I did with uh, Helia from uh, Kone Foundation. I interviewed uh, Veiko Kunas from uh, municipality of Helsinki, which is uh, mm, head of culture promotion uh, in the municipality. And also Paula Tuovinen, which is the director of art promotion center in Finland, which is, uh, if I'm not wrong, the, the main institution, uh, that uh, funding institution for art and culture, especially the independent scene. Uh, so a good a good thing is that um, all these people were very open to speak about uh, the transparency of um, their institution, but also what what they they thought about transparency would be in art and culture. Um, it's uh, a bit difficult to, was a bit difficult for me to, to give uh, um, a global view of Finnish art and culture scene because the, the main problem is that there are different kind of institutions. Uh, if we think in term of uh, institutional theory, uh, this means that uh, we have uh, institutions like old style institutions, like the ministry, uh, uh, the municipality, and new institutions like Taike, which is an agency separated from the classical institutions like the Ministry of Culture that manages only the funding distribution to the art scene. This is different because Taike is, for example, uh, technically an, an agency. And uh, in the perspective of uh, new institutionalism uh, logic that started from the 70s, but 80s and 90s, especially in UK and US, these institutions are becoming uh, like the, 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 the mainstream, the, the main institutions. So in this institutional change, Finland has two realities. So the old logic of institutions and new institutions like Taike, which like from the point of, from the framework, institutional framework makes a lot of difference. Uh, for example, speaking with, uh, during the interview, there are some conflicts between like not conflicts uh, of uh, like uh, very harsh, but people understand that there are some, some difficulties in terms of interpretations. For example, uh, speaking with uh, Paula Tovinen, uh, she was uh, uh, telling me how uh, the logic of these uh, councils, re regional councils, was of the old institutions that are inherited within Taike, which is theoretically a new institution from an institutional point of view, is a new institution, is not a classical institution. And this creates some misunderstandings and mis misinterpretations. And here we are still in the language. So how to interpret? We are speaking, how can we understand ourselves? Um, but this is 
not important for me, as I started to say at the beginning. It's not about the institution. I, I want to speak to the people that are within the institution that understands this kind of conflicts situation within the institutions and want to, to challenge themselves and also the institution where they are working or also the people that are outside from the institutions to challenge themselves and also the institutions when they face the institutions like uh, making an application. This is difficult, it's not uh, easy because although Finland has, uh, has this uh, working culture, a good working culture, people are mm, open enough, not as in other part as I experienced at least, but uh, when we talk, when we say some word, some words should be the same for everyone. And this is the, the problem here, because the, when we started uh, with organizing the Global Art Summit, we uh, made uh, uh, a meeting with uh, all the people that uh, uh, mm, uh, could, should uh, speak during the summit, uh, the, the speakers, and uh, I also participated. And I, I told them that I will, I'm interested in transparency and how the institutions, your institutions, deal with transparency or yourself, what you think. So also my questions will be about the transparency. Uh, the mm, significant thing was that uh, only the artist present as a speaker mentioned transparency in the presentation during the art summit and not only mentioned transparency during the Dalsin, uh, the art uh, summit, but mentioned it as a, one of three fundamental pillars for every kind of strategy. It was transparency, diversity, equity, and transparency was, was there. From the other institutions, if mentioned, was like mentioned only superficially, like one of the um, different keywords used for the structuring of uh, strategies, but not in this kind of, uh, um, with this uh, importance, giving, underlining this, uh, this importance. Uh, but this, this uh, it's not, uh, as I told uh, at the beginning, it's not important for the institution per se is important for the people and uh, people from Taike that apply um, for funds at Taike or people that apply for funds at uh, Helsinki municipality, people that apply for funds at Kone Foundation. I listened to the last presentation of the open call they always have people asking for transparency and feedback for their applications. And still, there is no, there is no feedback because it doesn't exist in the strategy. So it doesn't exist uh, from the beginning of the whole process of the institution, how the institution is built. And these are not uh, mm, things that can be uh, overcome by a good working culture. 
because it's not about uh, to believe in persons and to, to think, is this person honest? Is this person that is evaluating my application honest? Or is this uh, uh, person that is writing an application honest in what is he saying? But is about a structure, to make possible a structure from the beginning that uh, clarifies this criteria, the famous criteria uh, that we use in selecting uh, art and culture. Um, I noticed that uh, uh, Helsinki municipality um, has renewed the um, application uh, procedure. Um, still is missing the transparency. So there is no uh, feedback for the people that apply. Um, mean, there is no. Sorry for interruption. You mean now the uh, motivation of the decision? Yes. Yep. Yeah. The feedback for the mm -hmm. when you you have the the feedback for your application. So if it is negative, mm -hmm. there is no explanation why, and no poss and there is no possibility to to request that. You you can uh, appeal the decision. Uh, you can have uh, your application reviewed by other people, not the same people. Uh, but it's not possible to uh, have uh, the points. Mm -hmm. So because are with the points and the justification of the points, mm -hmm. you will have some superficial explanations uh, like uh, sorry we couldn't uh, support your application your art project or cultural project because we didn't have funds mm -hmm. for example and this is so because we cannot give to anybody but this is not a feedback because it's not based upon criteria and the criteria should be clear. And what is more uh, problematic, and this is why he's called the transparent elephant in the room, is that um, the criteria of uh, evaluation of the projects are interpretable. This means that uh, everyone here can interpret one criteria. And the criteria is given to limit the interpretation. Mm -hmm. So the criteria, if we uh, see the etymology of the, the word, is to have some basis upon which we can form a judgment a decision uh, upon uh, certain things. And the people working uh, within these institutions, from Helsinki Municipality, Kone Foundation, uh, Taike, uh, say that, yes, these criteria are interpretable because uh, uh, it's enough that is the artist themselves that evaluate artists. So it's not, for example, in the case of Taike or in the case of uh, Kone Foundation, uh, their justification is that, hey, you are evaluated by people like you. So you should be, so it's enough. But for me, it's not enough because I'm applying at the institution and the institution is not making a decision but is leaving the decision to someone else that interprets according his parameters. And this is problematic because when I start writing a project, I see the criteria of evaluation and I based my writing on that. Mm -hmm. 
So if that is interpretable, I don't have any parameter how to write my my article, how to pre present my my application. Sorry. So and this is Taike Kona Foundation Helsinki Municipality, Oulu Municipality. What what is the solution? Uh, I don't know what is the solution. The solution is to start from the strategies forming the future. If you don't put the clear, transparent criteria, since there you cannot build an institution and it's another step, procedures within the institution. So it doesn't make sense the institution per se. Uh, the, the, the hope is, uh, I still want to stress this thing, uh, to speak to the people. For example, I, I appreciated very much um, the, the passion of uh, Johanna Tukanen, because she is still fresh. Uh, she started working in Oulu municipality in six months, less than a year at least. And you see it when she speaks, she wants to make things different because he, she comes from, uh, from the context, from, from the independent scene, from independent institutions. So they, uh, uh, these people know the, the problems, but it's very hard if you enter within these institutions that have the power to decide, uh, the, the famous gatekeepers hmm? like Kone Foundation, Taike, municipalities, every municipality, is difficult to change. It's much more easy to change you as a person than the institution itself. If it doesn't start from the beginning, from the strategy. And the strategies are words, are keywords. And these keywords should be not the keywords of the politicians, should be the keywords of the artists. What are these people that are applying? What are they saying? If, for example, because it's only one term, transparency that I'm focusing, if all these institutions, have people asking them for transparency, why it is not part of the strategy that is built upon all of the institution and the procedures within the institution. So to have a coherence from the strategy mm -hmm. to all these things and to, to, to make the change because the institutions institutionalize I repeat. So everyone should take, like, even working within an institution, a step back from the institution itself. Because the best uh, institutionalized person, as we know, is Eichmann. And Hannah Arendt has written a lot about the perfect institutionalized person that obeys the order of the hierarchy of the institution. So this is the, the extreme, the extreme uh, example, but I think it makes more, more sense to, to what, what I wanted to say with all this booklet. Um, This, uh, this booklet is um, part of uh, mm, my mm, personal research. Um, is uh, more uh, technical part uh, of it because uh, my research regards the iconology, iconography of boulevardization. 
and uh, boulevardization is the boulevardization of Helsinki. And the boulevardization of Helsinki is uh, the, um, the plan of uh, urban plan of uh, Helsinki and used by an institution. And this means under these terms are hidden more buildings, more densification, so more profits. And uh, this term justifies, is justified because uh, the openness of Helsinki city for the future, because Helsinki wants to densify more to accept more migrants. So it's this idea of openness. And so the, the more migrants, more diversity justifies more buildings, more densification, more profits. And uh, for sure, these profits do not go to people that are coming in Helsinki, to the migrants. These profits do not go to mm, uh, lower classes of uh, Helsinki because they will have conflicts with each other, like citizens, between themselves, but also with, uh, with migrants because more people living together, less space, uh, more buildings, less public space, less uh, uh, natural space will create this conflict and this uh, idea of following uh, how art and culture is used to embellish uh, to make beautiful these policies of to make this uh, to pass this idea of uh, everything is beautiful everything is good open, transparent, when in reality there are already conflicts. But um, luckily Finland, compared to other European uh, uh, countries, has this uh, uh, economic, uh, financial possibilities and, which is more important, still have these people opened also to to discuss at least um, these uh, these issues, I mean people also that participated from this institution. So we are in a position where appears that people can make some change still, and not make things uh, going in the uh, worst directions like uh, we see in other parts of Europe and also of the world. So um, I think uh, there is uh, more or less 30 minutes. Uh, if you have uh, questions, I'm here to, to answer, so please. While you were s speaking about this, like, like what I see, yeah, this uh, situation with, uh, let's say, publicity of, of the decision-making processes, like uh, the TAPS application, yeah, for, for mm. founding. If there is, like, if there are, like, the concrete criteria, yeah, which kind of, I don't know, maybe, maybe Jan can correct me, how, no, public, just yeah, how public they are. The, the, the criteria. No, the, no, the, the decisions. Uh, well, uh, concerning the Helsinki city, they do, uh, when they make a negative uh, decision, they do point out the possible lacks in the criteria. Mm -hmm. Those are, I just went through, like, not for this event, but otherwise. So like mismatching. Yeah, yeah they, 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 they would be saying that you don't, you, you know, meet these criteria on these and these points. Mm -hmm. But uh, they are very short as Roman pointed out. So they are not but my question. Uh, okay. uh, so I think that there 
why they are short, yeah, is like first of all, there's a lack of resources. Mm -hmm. Yeah, let's say if uh, we have like 500 of, of applications, yeah, and, and we know that that uh, let's say 50, 70 of them will be approved. So and then we get 430 uh, requests for uh, to explain the decision. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, so if there are resources yeah. at, the, yeah. at the institution, I can, to, I can, to, yeah, to, like, to, to I can, I can reply. Yeah. And, and can it be like, for example, like automatized, yeah. like some, somehow exactly. or like semi-automatized? No, no, automatized totally. Um, I work for European Commission uh, as an evaluator for art and culture projects. I participate in evaluation of Creative Europe projects which is a program for art and culture, Horizon Europe, which is uh, for research. Uh, Cost Action is another funding uh, um, association that uh, gives funds for research networks. So, and uh, the people, uh, so these institutions that are totally neoliberal institutions, so new institutions, mm -hmm. Uh, not the classical old bureaucracy and uh, uh, these dinosaur institutions. No, no, these are new institutions, which are not perfect, but still is uh, the projects are, at least where, where I uh, work as a freelancer, as uh, I'm paid for my work and uh, I write based uh, uh, on clear criteria, sub-criteria, points and justification of those points. Why I have given not 100 points, but 80 points. So every point that I take out, I should explain. And this is done by two persons or three. So that do, do not know each other. So independently evaluating, mm -hmm. yeah. they make a consensus of their uh, individual uh, evaluation reports. Mm -hmm. And this consensus, if it is not reached, there should be another a third uh, evaluator that evaluates the same projects. And at the end, make a consensus, all three, and they are supervised by quality controller, and then the text, the final text, is the text that every people get who have applied get the feedback. Mm -hmm. So you have a text for every point that are taken out from your maximum 100 points of evaluation. And the problem here is, for example, especially with Taike, the costs. Mm, uh, the agency where I work, which is neoliberal agency, European level, are the same as Taike. So the administrative costs of the institution, they give to everyone feedback with points, and Taike do not give that. And uh, they have the same costs. So if they have, uh, for example, uh, 46 million per year, like Taike gives 40, 40 something, uh, they have, I don't know, six or more than six million, mm -hmm. like administrative costs. Compared the percentage of costs, of administrative costs, and the overall sum that they deliver is like, I don't know, 15%, uh, 12% with the same percentage, at European level, you give feedback to everyone who applies. So this is another... I have a question. So you work in three different European level uh, programs. Yeah, programs. So, programs. so um, but do you get paid? Yeah, sure. Yeah, okay. So this, uh, the problem also is that in five years of the persons who evaluate don't get paid. But, uh, on the other hand, does these three programs, do they have then other do they do other work or do they merely do the evaluation? Because they, I think that's other things as well. They do also other works like okay. formation. They have uh, 
the desks are under there. Mm. So but do they the representative. Programs? Yeah, yeah, they, they do like formation things. No, they no, do programs like really not information. What like, What do you mean uh, by programs? Like, what um, kind of programs? Kind of. Um, Mm, well, target atmosphere art program now, and uh, then they do uh, other. They have their own programs. They do also. Uh, your fair, fair pay, pay comes to my mind. But uh, I have another. This is not my question at all. Sorry. No. Uh, my question is: Should the application be transparent as well, that everybody can see the application? Sure. Uh, the program, because this doesn't have an European. Level. Sure. Uh, uh, doesn't happen, I don't know, doesn't happen. Happens uh, that uh, you are, uh, once you, you you get the grant, the grant should be like, uh, uh, the, the program, what you have uh, yeah. done should be open. Yeah, that's always So that, open. that is like yeah. normal. Yeah, the process, you have the possibility to seek partners and so forth, and then you uh, can write about your uh, idea, what you are planning. So they, you know, they can match make you to other other applicants. But the applications, like the budgets and everything, those you can't really see anywhere yeah, um, during the, you know, before the decision making. Should but, that be or not? In Finland, like, if I, uh, as a, uh, if an uh, artist uh, would apply at Taike, should we all see what the person is writing at the budget? That be transparent, or it, I think should should be transparent once you get the fund because it's like it's your own project, mm -hmm. okay? And uh, you you do it like uh, with your idea and your creativity. But once you have it, like you are supported for that mm -hmm. thing, so you already and especially when it is a public bank, a public institution. So if it is public, you are taking public taxes, and uh, you you should automatically open that. And I think yeah. I, I'm not I'm not sure a hundred percent, but in Taike I spoke with um, with Henry Terho. I think that I can have access to the applications of the people that were. Uh, granted mm -hmm. during my application. So, if I, uh, who is my competitors? I said mm -hmm. that okay, I want to see the applications of the people that you have granted, and to see what is the difference of mine and theirs. And I think I'm not hundred percent sure, but you can have access on that, mm -hmm. of course, with uh, personal data covered because it's and, yeah, and also the costs. I don't know. I, I think will be also the cost. So I don't know, but I will ask for that. <laughs> Maybe mm -hmm. <laughs> will be interesting to know. Yeah. It's a very interesting discussion and <clears throat> um, questions that are, in my opinion, also black and white. Because also, for example, even hearing a suggestion that my application would be available for everyone to see make my skin crawl. Mm -hmm. It's uh, there is such thing as intellectual property, there is mm -hmm. such things as uh, development of ideas, which is a very personal journey for many artists. Yeah. And uh, when you make an agreement mm -hmm. within applying for the application that you know that there is certain people who will be uh, evaluating it and so on, mm -hmm. it is, it's, uh, you know that You kind of make this agreement with the with the institution about that, um, and um, uh, you yeah you accept that. But then um, having it uh, publicly for everyone does not feel right. Um, there is, though, in my opinion, a good. Uh, something to to think about when we when we think about the the budgets or or then for example of course there are certain mm -hmm. parts especially if you are granted the money there are certain parts that should be public mm -hmm. 
But for example, from the moment that you write the application to the moment that you are probably granted it, if you are granted the money, uh, your idea will develop while working on the project. It, it, it will develop even uh, more. And every time you go public with some ideas, there is a certain scrutiny about it. There is You, you want to be in control of what you as an artist uh, write, how it is being presented because it's part of your own image and so on. Do I want, when I reread my own applications, would they be successful or not? Uh, after a year or two, I am sometimes wondering that was it me writing them and I know how, how did that work process go and, and um, uh, there is certain things about, uh, so that I think that it's not a bad idea to have something of them pub uh, public, but I don't believe that it should be automatically all and especially for the applications that can be quite mm -hmm. raw in many ideas. Then there is also the, the financial side of that, which is actually uh, a very interesting uh, suggestion to and, and, and if to think about that. Yeah, that, that should the financial that maybe the financial side of the of the project should be maybe upon request or something. They should be available for a public view because. Uh, seeing how the resources are being spent within different, also independent projects, uh, how much is going to the um, cost of the salaries, how much is going to something else, how is it in, in relation to all the other mm -hmm. projects, that would be very valuable, of course. But yeah, it's, it's, it yeah. has sites. Uh, uh, is, is, for example, because uh, uh, if I'm not getting wrong, you say that uh, also, when you are supported with a grant, you have problems of opening your application. Hundred uh, percent. There is a difference: the project or the application, because it, uh, what what you have written in the application, the, the the package of the application. So not the personal data, but everything that you have written in an application. Uh, yes, I would have a problem with that because there is certain uh, amount of uh, questions that I give my personal opinion or, or thoughts uh, like re regarding the project, which are for a particular institution, and I wouldn't like other people going through them and mm. copy pasting them to their own obligations. But yeah, as this is writer, are, I agree with you. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and that's a different thing yes. as, as opening up and presenting yeah. my own project. Yeah, yeah. Like, that's I, the work. Yeah, yeah. I have some problems in this regard. For example, I'm evaluating a, pro a project of someone, yeah. and uh, the person doesn't know who I am. I feel bad for this because I feel like an expert writing, uh, having criteria in mind, and like. Uh, automatically giving points, I don't feel comfortable. I, I feel like I'm seeing something very personal to someone, but hey, he is open to me. Mm -hmm. I'm not open towards him. I'm part of the institution. I'm evaluating the project and the institution I'm in is not open. He don't know who I am. He don't know my CV, my uh, capacities of understanding his very personal thing, which is, I believe, in art, especially in culture, everyone puts its passion towards. And I'm seeing myself like an expert, seeing something very personal. And from the other side, I'm not opening myself. So why should I not permit to everyone to see also my capacity in evaluating this person? Because this person is open to me, like me in the position of an institution. I'm an evaluator paid by the institution. So why also this person that wrote the project should not see the application and how this application is evaluated by me. So this is my problem. So I understand that you may have like, oh, I don't want to give uh, 
my writing capacities to the others. But it's not about writing capacities because the writing capacities are just keywords that the institutions uses to make their select all the information to the art scene, then we can have a good competition, like people that you know, we can make, have make better enough money to support everything. Because there is there is a huge problem of uh, yes. underfunded yeah, cultural field yeah. in Finland particularly. Like in many other places, yes. I'm so sorry for, for yeah. jumping in like that, but uh, sure, yeah. sure, 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 it's, it's an issue. It's, it's, it's an issue. Yeah, but uh, yeah, but I have. To. <laughs> I have two. No, but is if you if you think that in Finland has this problem, if you put the discussion about money and finances that are very small, I don't care about the money, art culture exists without money, without institutions that gives money, is historically proven. Art exists before the institutions. Yeah, and the institutions the of art, <laughs> institutions, institutions of art are built upon art. It's not the contrary. So this is my thing. To deinstitutionalize the people, myself as an evaluator within the institution, and to share the information to everyone. I have two points. Um, Kore, for example, um, they ask the description that is public. I think that's good. Yeah, 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 yeah. for the, uh, yeah. the description, um, the abstract. Yeah, kind of abstract. And then uh, I would like to ask Romeo, so how does, you are an evaluator on a European level, so how does the European level institutions choose their evaluators? That would be very interesting to know us. But I, I the, the recruitment process. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, yeah, yeah about that. Yeah, yeah. This, yeah. Is, this is, uh, now, I, I, am, I, am, I am selected, I participated to the, the, the open call, is open during the whole program mm. uh, timeline. Yeah. I was selected from the previous uh, one, was well, uh, 2013, 2021, something like that, or 20, 2014, 2021, anyway, and now it's uh, 2021, 27. So, and the open call is for the uh, evaluators. You can send your CV, your uh, mm, Experiences that you have, and they select. And they sorry. select. They select according, uh, I guess, because I'm not a hundred percent sure. Uh, on your uh, academic background mm -hmm. and your expertise during your career, and uh, also there is a geographic. Uh, distribution of evaluators. So they see also this. So not uh, all the evaluators, for example, for me coming from Albania, uh, I think this was one of the points uh, that they have uh, checked to see that, okay, from Finland we have uh, already two, let's take one from Albania, or if we have 10 from Italy, because it depends also from the uh, size of the countries also. And uh, another thing is the languages, the languages, how, how many languages you speak, um, Italian, uh, Spanish, uh, German, French, English are like, so the, the access of, because the applications can be in French, in German and English, uh, Spanish, uh, Italian. Um, I, I'm not sure uh, all, but uh, at least what I have uh, evaluated, uh, these are so are different languages that you have uh, the applications from. So these are uh, the criteria of evaluation. So based on CV and experience, and, and it, also this. And, and is it public then? Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. All, all is public. Uh, you, you are not. Uh, this is not public that I have evaluated this project. Mm -hmm. It's public that I am part of the evaluators pool mm -hmm. of experts that they have for each call. 
and this year, uh, if I'm not wrong, is uh, three or, four, or five years after um, the period of the program, you can find this information. So if I am uh, an expert from 2014, 2021, until 2025 will be uh, online, is online my name as evaluator mm -hmm. for the years that I have participated. So this is the, but European Commission is not perfect, as I said. There are like terrible things for me, especially in terms of, uh, because not knowing the context, this is one of the issues. How an expert can evaluate someone, a project, I can evaluate a project from Portugal. Mm -hmm. What about the knowledge of the context that I have? Mm -hmm. So this is also another issue. Of course, I have the access in language, for example, because I'm not uh, evaluating a project that I don't know the language. For example, if it is in Spain, I can have access uh, from the Spanish and see the information. But still, this is uh, problematic. And I mentioned here a uh, huge problem, for example, that was about the the gender equality, I mentioned three cases, problematic cases from evaluation from European in my booklet, without mentioning uh, the, the, the exact names. But as an evaluators, we were three evaluators evaluating a project that was one of the projects uh, tackling uh, the, the gender equality. You know, is like you have to tackle the gender. What about the gender equality? And the project writer mentioned that this uh, in this project we will do for, uh, an activity for women in classical music okay for women and my issue was that this is a project that will happen in different parts of europe and in some part of europe men that goes in playing classical music i are perceived in this mentality, macho mentality, like uh, gay. This is something for gay. You are not man enough. So you don't have to, to be a violinist, a pianist, an orchestra. So what if this project goes in that context and makes only for women? It does the contrary. So makes the impact is worst. So if in a logic of, okay, if you see in Finland or, uh, I don't know, in Germany, there are more men than females in uh, orchestra, you do this and it makes sense to make a gender equality. But if you do it in a place when there are very few men in orchestra, because the mentality is that if you play uh, classical music, you are a gay, so, and you make the, this activity only for females there, so you are doing the contrary yeah, yeah, of what you should do. So these are some, you know, debates, having debates with other experts. Hey, I have a different opinion because I know that context that if these projects go there, does this thing. So are a lot of issues, a lot of uh, technicalities that, uh, uh, so when when I say European Commission, I evaluate. It's not that that is like paradise, but at least you have this transparency because my focus was on transparency. So in the transparency, are much more advanced and are not are totally neoliberal, which are institutions, which is not from the other pole of my uh, uh, logic of seeing things. Uh, but, you know, we have to decipher, to, to decode their language of this liberal and to expose their. I think that Jan's question was your question about the transparency of, uh, of like, hiring uh, process of, 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 uh, of the... Well, in a way, yeah. yeah. So, so, for example, si since you're hired, yeah, yeah. or while uh, this decision of, of hiring you, yeah. well, Let's let's take you as an yeah, example. Yeah, sure, sure. Uh, speaking about evaluators, not just common. Uh, 
how transparent is the decision-making process of, of the recruitment of evaluators? I... If you don't know, it's I, okay. No, I no, mean, I, I don't know. I'm, I mean, uh, so what I suppose... Yeah, like, do you know with whom you were uh, competing and how public this information? No, 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 I don't know with who. I, I was selected, like, uh, I just sent my, and I didn't mm -hmm. know. The, the call is open for the whole yeah. years of the program, and I didn't know anything how they... Before you are, uh, like, uh, starting to, to evaluate, you do, like, uh, a meeting. You are given... Uh, of course, so uh, presentations passes. and that. You have a project, a mock case, mm -hmm. and on that you are evaluated. And everyone, you see all the other people, because you have a common meeting with the others that are selected for that year, for example. This is only at the beginning, so mm -hmm. I did it once. So the other years will come automatically because you, you build experience but everyone is uh, like passes through this and even there i think this also should be like more stress on that to give to all the experts the same uh, capacity of reading interpreting the criteria so there is much more to do but here for example in some institutions i know because everyone interprets so how do you find them like uh, the way Tiger recruits the evaluators and how Kone recruits the evaluators and uh, so can you see uh, like uh, this difference there so can you discuss the, that? Yeah. Um, first of all is I, I <laughs> I'm very much uh, focused on following the money. So first of all Kone pays the evaluators. Okay, and this is good because someone is doing a job or work and is paid. Taike doesn't, and this is very problematic because one of the values of Taike is this uh, improving the working conditions of them. So there is huge problems. So how can you ameliorate the working conditions of the field when your experts are not paid, are paid only during the meeting they have evaluated, I don't know, 40, 50 projects and are paid only for one day discussing with each other, hey, we selected this, 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 but what about 50 projects that these people have evaluated? So this is another thing. I repeat, here should be also uh, transparent uh, how the people are uh, I, I don't have, because it's maybe it's my personal thing. When I see a project from someone that uh, I don't know, for sure, because will be conflict of interest, of, uh, of course. But to me, it's like uh, reading something very personal. And I want these people, this person, to know that who I am. I want to be open to, I, I don't have anything uh, contrary to publish my name. Hey, I, I evaluated this project, one, two, three, four, 20 projects that I evaluated this year. I want to be my name in these 20 projects so that people that uh, applied, these 20 people can see, hey, but this person haven't, uh, uh, hasn't given me uh, the, the right points because I know he is friend with another one that is my competitors, my, my competitor in that call. So he can be like, uh, can, can know maybe something that I haven't declared to the institution. So these are very technical things, but for me it's not, because they, this is all because we, we want to, uh, especially with uh, Johanna Tukanen came this, uh, because there is this hate speech and uh, so on. Yes, but at that level, is this if it is like hate speech, I think can be like eliminated as a problem when you give the points and justify the points. And of course, someone will still get, but at least you give a justification of what have you seen in the application and 
let's go back to this state funded uh, agency target and the recruiting process yeah. of the uh, evaluators. Um, you are recruiting to uh, European level uh, by an opening call. Yeah. And for Taike, uh, we who are kind of involved, the shareholders, we are asked uh, to nominate yeah. people. Uh, so should Taike also go for this kind of open call? I think yes. I think yes for two reasons. First, more people will give, uh, will have the information and to change them. So you cannot be like uh, always uh, involved with the uh, with application, because if if they receive like I don't know for every call like I don't know four thousand, five thousand, ten thousand applications. It's, it's good to involve all the people and all the people as much people as possible. So not all the people. At that point, this every people that is participating, evaluating the others, will know the criteria and how institution thinks about the criteria. And then everyone will have the same information, and we will eliminate this uh, managerialism that is killing art and culture and creativity within art and culture. Because you, you 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 see these people that knows how to use these keywords, okay, and how to write a project, and what is behind is often not always, but is often that or people that are very very good artists, very good uh, cultural operators don't know how to write uh, them for project. How how can how can these people have access? So if you have this uh, information sharing, managerial information sharing to everyone, you eliminate, you neutralize, I wrote here, you neutralize the expert and brings out the critic. So the critic, I have a critical point of view of uh, this project because I am uh, the expert of the field. And when I say that his artwork is not so original, I can demonstrate. So, because he, every artist, oh, my art is original. I am expert of the field, of the field, and I can say, hey, you haven't researched very well your field because these things that you are saying that are so original has happened here two years ago, twenty years ago. So you haven't built your project on studying the context when you want to put your art and culture and have an impact. So these, these are like technical things, but I think if I understood it, everyone can understand. So, yeah. I'm sorry, I have a question. Yeah. Uh, it's a very I was wondering always in, in all the application processes and, and uh, um, and the aftermath after you, 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 if you have been lucky enough to to get the money, and then um, if you, then you write your report and then you send it, and that's one of the things that, for, for example, for me was, um, I think it has personally reason even more questions than the whole application process. That at least for the application process, there is. Uh, more or less clear criteria in, for example, in most of the cases, like for instance in Taiki, you, you do, do know who the evaluators are and personally I don't think that I would uh, benefit anything from knowing who particularly has said no or said yes for my project, uh, as long as I know that who, who have been involved and on which basis, how often are they changed and so on, because there are so many more things that are affecting the decision making besides being a friend with someone, right? There is um, taste in, 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 in art and your personal values and all, all the uh, things that you have done and so on. And what is happening in the, in the world at the moment and what interests you. Um, but yeah, but then the reporting, because for example, being a perfectionist as I am, and then I put a lot of time into that and then putting all the financial report like super, super precisely and mm. all the artistic report very precisely. And then it goes into the void. Yeah, in the black hole. It's, it's, <laughs> yeah. and, and you have no idea yeah. what happens to it. You have yeah. no idea, does somebody read it? You have no idea 
uh, how is it being considered in the statistics? For example, your financial report. I, I had this being, exactly this point it, uh, with uh, Paula Tovinen, yeah. and she agreed that the institutions should build upon these things. So, but not only of the you had already the grant, yeah, yeah. but also from the people that, from the project not uh, supported. So all this, uh, because our data and our precious data for people within the institutions that knows how to read this data and you have a clear, that is the, the place when you can have what is happening in the context. You have a clear idea the level of artistic level, the ideas that are coming around, the problematics, issues, so everything is there. So reporting and projects uh, given to institutions. So this uh, is the data management problem, which is a huge thing, is a science, uh, like an, should, should, should be like, built upon this, but it's like the most precious information for the institutions. Also so I don't know what, how, I, I haven't uh, developed further this, uh, this issue, how they deal with that. She told me that, yeah, we, we built and we see this uh, feedback you know, based on what we have, but more than this. It's, so, yeah. it's just so connected to transparency because yeah. it's still yeah. part of the process. Yes, totally. Mm -hmm. And as a grant receiver, you also want to know if there was a meaning. But you know, yeah. did this, like, anyhow, kind of, did this make impact? Yeah. You want to know, you want to know, was I good or bad? Yeah. Or was I just average? Like, can, I, can I add something? Yeah. Uh, might be out of the book. Please. How often is, is it a myth or that uh, there's always the saying that if you get grant once, you're going to get every year? <laughs> I don't know if every year, but yeah, it helps. And then I see some people mm -hmm. do get it every year, and then I see that they follow certain kinds of patterns in the writing. Mm. Yeah, but mm. this How is you know? you you know. Right, right. Are they, you have, you I don't want to name so and so person I know. Every year he gets, mm. every year, and he does the same thing every year. Mm. The readers are different. No, different. I really mm. don't know. How I he think... manages to be lucky enough to get every year. He almost leaves. Of course, he spent in beer. Uh, I I also I also when I write a project I also repeat some some yeah. things like because it's like uh, I know who is behind I know who is uh, so that there is an evaluator that don't know me personally for sure and so I'm trying to follow the criteria of evaluation that I see from the institution and to make understand this unknown figure of uh, the expert and to, to match and to give him something that institution asks him mm -hmm. to check. So it's very tricky. So the whole thing that I, was this booklet is to neutralize this uh, through giving uh, information to everyone, like technicalities and pro mm -hmm. procedures to give to everyone to this and to neutralize this expert thing that, as I said, is, is not very good. Just to leave then the critic and to critically uh, evaluate the project. So, so this art you are saying this is original is not so original. Is good, but is not very good, or is like you haven't done research at all. So these are, and and nobody will get offended if you give them like feedback that hey, you are doing saying this, and I'm I'm saying this. But you might get offended, but then you get over it, but if you don't get anything, you just you are in the same way. Yeah, yeah, but we're talking about like also, also you can learn. Yeah. So and 
in the barometer of Taike, uh, the justification that of the people that wanted this feedback, hey, we want feedback. And also in Kona, we want feedback because we ameliorate how to, to apply. So it's like technicalities and procedures. Asking for that. And one thing about the Kona, for example, or it's also with Taike, that um, because they're having this attempt of making it more transparent and more open the whole process of how to apply and uh, uh, join our meeting when when they before they open the, mm -hmm. the call, they always have these meetings and then they go through like what is the theme and how you should write and what you should apply mm -hmm. with and what you should not. But then at the same time, uh, there is nothing more in these meetings than what is already written on the website. Mm -hmm. Which is also like in case of the, uh, Kone, at least they are extremely precise with what they write. So there is already kind of a big, huge job mm -hmm. done there, of course, and it should be appreciated. But then, because these meetings, I at least always hope that will there be something else mm -hmm. that I will hear there that will help yeah. me. Yeah. I, I also I also gave some some example for example because our keywords for example at European level you see this audience development mm -hmm. and when you see an artist that don't know anything about keywords of management uh, and institutions and mm -hmm. all the idea is that I'm doing art and the audience is developed like I'm sharing my my thing why mm -hmm. at, at seems like automatically the audience. What the institution intends is that it's not enough you to showcase your work. Mm -hmm. To develop is to take the people involved, make a workshop with the people, produce some art thing, cultural thing, and they can understand the, what is behind the art and culture. So this is the development. Hey, but to have this information, mm -hmm. it's like crazy. Why shouldn't people, I understood it. Everyone can understand it. Why don't you share with the people that, hey, it's not enough for you to sync. Take some people to make audience development uh, check, mm -hmm. huh? just to check that. Take the people, make something with them. So through a workshop, I don't know, produce a result that will not be like uh, the most fantastic thing that you have ever done, but that's at least you have taken the people from the hand and showcased your, you show your laboratory of knowledge of what stands behind your art. Actually, we went the other way in one um, like institution that also uh, gives out um, money. So we had this audience development question, but then we started saying, "Here, there is there is this question, but you know, you don't have to answer it if you don't want to, because mm -hmm. not any, any every artist does this their work. Yeah, they, I you know um, yeah, yeah. The development work. And I understood what what you are saying. Yeah. The problem is that they don't know the institutions right. because. The institutions don't know what are the objectives, their objectives, and uh, their criteria and sub-criteria, yeah. which is something different. Yeah. So they, is, this yeah, yeah, yeah. knows what I'm, to, which I'm talking about. They know very exactly. And then, like after years of experience, uh, started not asking specifically for audience development because uh, if, uh, if you wanted want to develop the artists. The, the prime was to develop the uh, help. Let, let the artists develop themselves. Yes, but this is like audience development uh, at European level is not development of artists, it's like capacity building. So it's like, but you know, uh, for example, if, you have, if I put uh, as objective of our institution is development for audience and capacity building for all artists, so development of artists, like, Call it like that. You can take one of the two. You are not. Uh, it's not mandatory to to make both. Yeah, okay. So you can do a project that uh, gives more skills to the artists through certain. So it's not. 
It's not mandatory. Maybe the evaluators should do this. Uh, uh, the studio visit to every artist before they are deciding. <laughs> Thinking, and really, it's such an interesting question. It's so <laughs> difficult to, to leave and keep on sending messages. Another question. It's another no. question. <laughs> um, I'm s we are talking about transparency. Yes, yeah. I was correctly corrected. <laughs> We're not talking about the resources or money, but transparency is strongly connected uh -huh. to the resources mm -hmm. and also the challenges that many of the, for instance, those who are applying from Daike or from Pona or from all the other institutions, uh, very often, because it is a fight about the resources, and then it is also a fight about providing a good quality work, not only good quality application, but then also a good quality work and then a good quality report. Nobody actually pays you for writing the application, writing the report, yes. unless you're smart and put it in the budget. But um, then you are still, uh, fighting to make with the tiniest resources a good quality work to compete with the, all the other institutions which have actually proper funding to do the cultural, the artistic work. So I think that uh, <clears throat> what even though it's a, it's a bit off topic, but I think it's no, no, very it's, relevant to the to it, the issue itself it, and, and, and it influences um, because at least you put war, uh, your time in writing bureaucratic things. So it's time, precious time that should be paid. So, and influences your time mm -hmm. that could have been dedicated yeah, for the creative side. Just like the time yeah. thing from what, what actually my main point is because when you have to uh, create a work of art with a salary that is below actually, it's, it's they are tiny, mm -hmm. uh, unless we're talking about Kona, or then that the money that are being provided for 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 a project for a performance, um, it, it's it's the money is tiny compared to all the money that is actually being given to all the governments on houses and etc. Mm -hmm. and what theaters and so on. Mm -hmm. So um, and yet you are still being demanded a certain quality of the work, which is of course fair, but then there is. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I totally understand, but I haven't, yeah. I haven't, uh, I haven't focused very much on this uh, because it's an issue, and I yeah. think uh, at Taike that they are trying to do something with the salaries. And Paula Tovinen uh, spoke to me with this and trying to, and also to, to, to tell me some difficulties with the ministry and how uh, these calculations are done. For me personally, like is from a strategic point of view, like writing, creating, and uh, researching, I don't touch. Like I don't, I don't ever mention the the amount of money is fair or not, because for sure, for sure, everywhere, art and culture is like uh, the last uh, budget uh, voice of the government mm -hmm. and also the institutions that so everywhere and so for this reason i don't even okay. talk about it yeah. we, is an issue for yeah. sure affects yeah. the quality that you are talking about, for sure and it's, it's so it's you have been searching that part and there will be certainly we will also focus on the other part now the request from the art and culture field is to have like one percent of the uh, state budget uh, to arts and culture and being an economical person that is in the like one percent in the budget you know when you count it can go a move, move so it's in this co-found uh, um, set that is like uh, marginali, the false mm -hmm. margin Mm -hmm. So art and culture is always in the false margin, and I say like one percent is not enough. It has to be so that it has no, no. to be But budget. at and European the level, there are countries. Sorry to interrupt. That, there are countries that have much more. Yeah, like, yeah uh, one percent is like. Yeah, and that's that's why we are like now people are saying one percent, and I say no, no more. And this is what I you know been advocating that one percent is like in the. Margin that doesn't. And uh, in, in this year budget. 
uh, I haven't seen these years, but they just made, they didn't make any cuts in the last budget mm -hmm. for this, this year. Uh, but let's see what happens next. But anyways, but that is the, the money is uh, also an interesting yeah. discussion. But uh, today we have been talking about the you know how the transparency of yeah. the distribution of the means is. So, yeah, yeah. But the fact that, for example, the evaluators are not being paid, this is just plain ridiculous yeah. because that affects the quality of their work. Yeah, yeah sure, sure. Like straightforward yeah. and no, but also from because for example, if I if I don't uh, evaluate. A, according certain criteria of quality because as i said everyone every couple of uh, persons that evaluate a project have a quality controller so i'm always monitored how i write and how i give this uh, so but if i'm not paid i don't have any uh, yeah, it's not uh, how and, and how can you how can you ask to someone for quality when you are exploiting yeah, him? Yeah. Because it's like exploitation of work, free work. Do you know if there is any evaluation of the evaluations that has been done, for example, within Daike or um, I don't know, Escort Minister of Culture, or all the other different? Then what are the practices? Because, for example. By looking back, or well, let's say, okay, what kind of um, grants have been given within the last five years? Uh, what kind of people, uh, what kind of projects, how much the same people re re repeat what you have been referring to? Um, what kind of uh, projects have been in uh, favor? Has there been any favorites mm. and so on? So, do you know if there is any kind of well, This is like, uh, it's not disclosed information. I know that they, for example, Conor does this, like they see how you evaluate and how the evaluators do this project's uh, evaluation. And also they see also they have, because speaking with them, they also have like a, a divided uh, the certain uh, areas of the field, like theater, visual arts and this also in research areas uh, but it's not disclosed it's not uh, an information they of course they they give uh, the, the data that we have funded for these areas uh, this amount of money and also taike does this but evaluating the evaluators and how they they don't they don't have it Yeah. I so thank you for your work and for a very interesting discussion. Thank you. I'm sorry to yeah, but thank you for coming. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. 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 Yeah, I think we can maybe continue without the live stream. Okay. The if you finish. If you want. Of what? Of the evaluators. In Tai in Tai Yeah. Uh, tai Ke asks uh, the stakeholders, like associations and so forth, to nominate. Mm -hmm. And to nominate, uh, you have to, when you start the nominating process in your association, you are, um, you know, for example, here we talk who should be, you know, uh, presenting uh, like our community there. And then we make a list. And then you have to ask the person, like, and not all persons want to do that. They have their art, art going on or something. So mm -hmm. you don't really always get the people you want to have there. And also this... Um, and this is for free, so the Taiki do not pay. They pay for the actual sittings, but not for the work. So, mm -hmm. because you have to read a lot of... So, yeah, they pay for the meetings. So. They pay for the meetings, so, and um, they also pay for the travel costs. Yeah. And so forth, but not for the actual work. Mm -hmm. So, uh, that is the dilemma, because uh, it's peer-to-peer -peer evaluation, and as we know, uh, artists are not the richest part of the population anyhow. So um, you are kind of, you said the people, uh, evaluators yeah. are exploited. I think also they, their time is used wrongly and they should get fair, you know, they should get paid for the evaluation. 
in or as uh, um, Anastasia said, uh, because we, you know, you ask for the quality from the artist, so to have the quality in the evaluation as well. If you commit a lot of your time for evaluation, mm -hmm. um, so you should really get paid for that. What do you think if for just just like because sorry, because it is an honor to be chosen to be evaluated. We have this like mantra going on that it's an honor yeah. and it's an honorary position. And that is okay, it is an honorary position, but still you should get paid. Yeah, but still see it. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> what do you think like I, it just came like, to my mind if for example stakeholders if there is like an open call and the stakeholders nominate those people who will choose the evaluators oh, instead. Yeah. yeah, but so so they will like participate in the in the oh. like let's say like one or two meetings where they go through the application of, of the open call mm -hmm. and then they decide their or stakeholders can like participate maybe by, by their own in, the, in this process. But then yeah, it's the target kind of like make the open call and then the stakeholders decide who will be the evaluator, but the evaluators will then pay. Mm, yeah, and actually they have, because they have the regional bodies, mm, regional uh, councils. councils, so they will make, and also like it is so tough <laughs> in a way, <laughs> way, because I don't, I don't know what would be the right system. I, I, I'm like, now I, I do wrong. I don't is, know what the right system is. Because I think... Uh, is the conflict, is a is a conflict yeah. from the institutional yeah. framework. Yeah. So these are yeah. coming from traditional institutions, yeah. these yeah. councils, regional yeah. councils, that mm -hmm. before, like in the 70s... You the nomination system. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 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 everything yeah, yeah. Is, is, is a tradition that comes with the uh, old form of institutions, like... Yeah. Uh, also, in the 70s. Yeah. Now the Taike, per se, is a new institution. And because if a new law, new law. takes inside this tradition, is from theoretical how it is the framework, institutional framework, yeah. is a contradiction. And so. when the new Taike was formed, we were all, it's, uh, it is a law, and you know the law process in Finland yeah. too, there is a lot of different hearings and you make proposals and so forth in the way. And the title law as it is now is done by the cultural people, actually. So we were all participating, association, municipalities, and also the regional uh, yeah. regions and so forth. Uh, it's a kind of also regional politics. What is the name of this law? Law on... Um, uh, and it, you know, I can show you. Uh, yeah, yeah. Because it's like uh, I've been, I, I've been, me, uh, I've been. Uh, uh, no, I need to check because this is a law. So I, uh, I prefer saying the law like it is. I will check for you for the law. Yeah, you know, because I've been in this law making mm -hmm. almost Process. all my uh, working life. Mm -hmm. So this is, and that is one point where you can actually have um, a lot of. What to say if you, especially now, the lawmaking is open if you know where the openness is. So you can you can actually have a say in lawmaking if you know where. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And that is yeah. always problematic. And but uh, for example, here we have tried to you know always. Um, kind of but is this logic, for example, to hire uh, uh, experts from the field? like is with these new institutions and this is done also for from the because also the city when i spoke to the kokunas he said that there is uh, sometimes that uh, the the proposals are evaluated by external experts mm -hmm. and this is not uh, like coherent with the old institution like such as a municipality and the system, how it works within. This is from the other new institutional, like Taike. And mm -hmm. this is like 
new institutions from mm -hmm. the 80s that came out, the agencies that hire people from outside of the field and uh, evaluate, make these evaluations. But yeah, it's but the final still decision a is in Helsinki is made by the Library and Culture Council. Yeah. So that is the decision making point. Yes. So the um, pre evaluations can be, I, I, it doesn't say on the webpage that pre evaluations are done by somebody else than the persons like within the uh, so, rank service. Uh, yeah, so they the they have. Um, I really need to ask Jacob. They have. Exciting. They <laughs> have uh, at least what what I was told was that uh, they have uh, the evaluations, the all evaluations, and they prepare a list. Yeah, the, so the office when the uh, eco is uh, mm -hmm. working, mm -hmm. they have the list of the proposals that they think should be supported and then goes to this other yeah. body which but is I a hierarchy yeah. a level that is and uh, basically are uh, also this political uh, yes, uh, people a, that uh, yeah. politicians that uh, have a say yeah. generally they confirm at least this was uh, told to me generally so not 100 percent they confirm the proposal of the culture department mm -hmm. but yeah this is like the mm -hmm. hierarchy how it is going but what were these e e external evaluators you were talking about within the municipality system or did you mean the mean the political decision makers no no the external evaluators they have uh, projects for example because he he told me that maybe within the municipality they uh, don't have an expert of that specific field because uh, project is I don't know somehow specific and they can give uh, this uh, project to be evaluated by an exter external yeah. expert. Okay, this should be and on their like in their criteria to try to tell this. This is like this I is think like there is news. Mm -hmm. I have never heard about that. No, yes. Municipality would give out the decision making process. Yeah. Yeah. Sounds like very odd, in a way. But maybe we don't know. Mm -hmm. Let's ask Rick. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Or maybe, or maybe they do not like the day. Maybe, maybe they don't give the decision, but they kind of invite the, the experts into the decision making process. Mm -hmm. No, no, evaluates. I will say yeah. that uh, evaluates the project. That of course passes still through the office of the. Culture department. Yeah, that's what I mean. Yeah. And so, then so they can invite them. basically it means invite the experts into the decision making process. Yeah, but that is kind of interesting. Yeah, but still they decide. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And the, yeah. the last yeah. say the last say is from the yeah. political uh, representatives that approve or not approve mm -hmm. the proposals mm -hmm. of the mm -hmm. office. So this is how it works. No, it's like it sounds it sounds like uh, for me, yeah, like it's, it sounds like it sounds good. Mm. I mean, at least you admit that uh, you do not have enough expertise. Yeah, yeah. yeah? And uh, and you do something about yeah. that. Yeah. yeah, and you do not like say, oh, okay, you will do it instead of us. No, like you kind of. Yeah, but so, it's, it, it's it's interesting. I don't know how the system is in in Helsinki, but uh, in the city where I worked, we invited the cultural board. They actually read together, like they were they were planning. The, uh, there was, of course, the kind of the uh, list, the proposal from um, from the um, um, administrative stuff, mm -hmm. uh, but the um, the cultural board they would really read and discuss amongst themselves, and they would, in in certain times, they would make uh, even drastical changes. Okay, and uh, but then they also told why. So it, it was not like uh, that the board would only like pow, stand by, you know, mm -hmm. they would just mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So, yeah, but and that, uh, was, that was really good because then, you know, because there were changes in the political thinking and so forth. So, hmm. yeah, it's it's always difficult to, to for me, the transparency is also this, uh, this kind of uh, uh, like at a basic level. 
okay, whatever your decision is, but you should give the information who was the person that took the, that decision, that evaluated that certain pr proposal, so the people that have applied can check and see the capacities of the institution to evaluate his personal thing. Because it should be like reciprocal, I think. And also, and, like in the Helsinki application, or if you go onto the web page, it clearly states who are the, uh, like the decision makers, and you have the list, and you almost have the contact information. So. And uh, you can always talk to a politician. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but uh, access access to the politician is, is like, I mean, it's always it's always good, but these are very technical things yeah. that is not just yeah. to, to talk with uh, yeah. because I, I also yeah. spoke to Paula Tovin yeah. like yeah. She, she was very open and yeah. uh, spoke frankly as yeah. I understood. Yeah. But that is not the, the, the issue. The issue yeah. is that very personal, very people that write their own thing, like an artist or also the, an organization. They put a lot of energies in and think that they will build something on their ideas. But is the, the problem of uh, the transparency? If you are not transparent, it's another level. Uh, you, you can say that, oh, we are independent. Like uh, I had this discourse and uh, discussion with people from Kone. Yeah. You are independent by, by what? How can I see that you are independent? They it's just, it's just, it's just, it's just the world. Money they give out. Yeah, but it's, but it's uh, the, if you have, uh, it's like, uh, it's not even uh, difficult if uh, you have uh, uh, read something from journalism or something like that, to so follow the money. Yeah. Follow the money is like very immediate. Yeah. Your profits, so your money come from Kone Corporation mm -hmm. and there is nothing wrong. But you cannot say that you are independent unless you prove it. And you prove it application by application. Because it's not uh, we are living in a corporate state. This is a corporate state. And are things that from institutional critique point of view, like my art practice, is discussed in the 70s in US. Hans Hake, he spoke about this when he exhibited in a, New York Museum of Art, hey, you are taking money from these people, which are doing these things. And they censored them, so these artists. So we are still at that level. So, But you, you have to demonstrate that you are independent. So it's not just the word. It's just transparent. We are transparent. We are independent. We are open. Either Sorry. Yeah. I don't know. You were like, uh, yes. Sorry first. Yeah, I, I have this fancy idea. You said you are not interested in the money. Okay, let's let's say everybody. No, no, from yeah, the no, strategic. No, 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 yeah, 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 but um, yeah, let's say the money is not the issue. So, like, um, we would have enough money to support everybody. Okay, but then we go and evaluate them still. And uh, what would be the evaluation process if you knew that you can like fund everybody? Yeah. So that would that change the uh, transparency somehow? Like, yes. uh, would that bring different results? Sure. And also, the, <laughs> yeah. the, 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 the thing issue. is that you can't get more money than you apply for, mm -hmm. and you can be stupid enough to apply too little. So if we could like. Um, Let's say the funding body could say like, okay, you applied for fifty thousand, but hey, your bro program is like five thousand. Like, like yeah. yeah, yeah. So they get more money. So this would be a very interesting situation. Uh, I think actually, I think actually, when I'm living here, uh, with my experience, what I have done in the past ten years at least, uh, that I'm in that situation. So even if I don't get some money, I still survive doing my thing. But because, my thing but was well, that no, no, I, I, I totally understand. Yeah. I don't think that is like yeah. I'm jumping from somewhere else. Yeah. Right. It, it seems so. so yeah, sorry. it seems, but it's not. Uh, coming from where I'm coming from, 
is from a strategic point of view that I don't discuss about money. Yeah. It's not that the money is not yeah. important. Of course, yeah. that mo these money are very important. And this influences quality of work of all the scene. And even if you have the capacity to support everyone, even if you have that capacity, you still should question what, how this money came to you and how is your approach to the institution? Are you institutionalized oh, yeah. or, yeah, not, yeah. Yeah. or not deinstitutionalized? Yeah. Or are you deinstitutional? So take a step back yeah. towards the institution, even if you're on an institution, if a global point. So you are no, here. It would be like it's, a similar operation. Yes, but it's, you know, but <laughs> every, but even, even, from, even from yourself, even yeah. if you do by yourself, I, I, I worked in a, yeah. I was lucky enough to work in an institution, small institution, yeah. and I changed all the strategy and we applied applied yeah. certain concepts from uh, yeah. downside up inside outside mm -hmm. so nothing is coming from the institution from top down direction and from outside inside so influences from outside so everything here and to practice that and to practice that is still difficult it's still challenging mm -hmm. to yourself how do you curate an exhibition. You are a curator. Why should be your curator? Why not also the artist to create and to break your idea concept? And to break is to break. And how to maintain together all these differences? So this is the whole meaning of this kind of research. So it's to deinstitutionalize, to take a step back from the institution, also your own institution that you have built it yourself. So this is like the, the basic thing. So not be part of the institution because it's, you know, with this uh, capitalistic logic and the neoliberal logic of, hey, uh, do party all together. But nobody needs to, that the institution should tell me that to relate with each other, we should do a party of our institution to build more uh, community inside. We know that. Mm -hmm. We are raised uh, like humans with other, you know, we're social animals. So we don't need that. We can have relations within institution, but not to make the, the dogma of the institution like a practice that should be like uh, applied to the whole society when we can have impact according our dogma. Is always like that is wrong. Someone will be like suppressed through that. So this is like very, very basic stuff. It applies to any kind of community. Yeah, yeah sure. Even like a like a family. Yeah, yeah, family. Of course, yeah. of course. So uh, how do you break that? How do you how do you accept your your parents, your your relatives? How do you accept why? Is that this is still related? Is yeah. there is there is nothing uh, more like natural? Is even beyond mm -hmm. this like uh, biological? Is at biological level because as I tell you, it's like the first it is institution is the language. As soon as we speak, we are institutionalized and we are institutionalizing the other. So even we are raised like this. And how to try that not everything is language. In art, is very common this. Yeah, but then when you master so, several languages, what does that make you? Yeah, it's a, still a challenge. It's not, should, nothing should be like, you know, the, the stone, you, I'm, I'm Mary <laughs> the asking, monolith. I'm Mary asking you, how do you break the situation so that you as a person are totally and free from every every point of view, because then you are it's, kind of uh, yeah. taking yourself out of the society. And no, that... no, no, no. Okay. It's not. Uh, can I make an example with your your piece of work? Sure. Yeah. He was uh, Suva was playing uh, with uh, Ero Salera, doing music improvisation with instruments that they have built. Mm -hmm. So not formal instruments, mm -hmm. uh, 
uh, normal instruments that we find, they start from the, and they build something that is going from someone from India and some other from Finland. So this is even before the level of language. Uh, is someone they 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 told us that is to feel the presence of the other. For me, is accepting the presence of the other within a certain space, and the space is defined by the sound. Yeah. So it's like basic level, very uh, uh, primal. He he. All that the primal level is not a communication, is a conversation. You give and give in a reverse. So you 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 react to the presence of the other and you see how and that became music. It's online, you can check it. <laughs> I, I know, but he is also already institutionalized. So yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, because he's background. Yeah, yeah. 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 But it's uh, it's still uh, yeah. from from the art we are starting from the art and yeah. build that kind of institution. So mm -hmm. he is like pre-linguistic level. So yeah. it's like all about space, sound, traveling in the space, and reception yeah. and reacting to that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So this yeah. is how you accept. You are do not. They don't understand each other. Yeah. They have totally cultural background, academic yeah. background, totally yeah. different mm -hmm. from each other. Still. But then, when you form society, yeah. But so, uh, is at this this level you can you can start. Yeah, but you, if you have already accidentally gone be beyond that, that you are also already living in a kind of mm. form that is called yeah. a nation state. And so yeah, 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 sure, sure, sure. Yeah. I for that I I'm I'm telling that step back one step back mm. from the your institution from my institution way when I evaluate. Or when I work in an institution, take a step back and to think that hey, this other person, first of all, should be reciprocal, transparent. This reciprocity. So, what I see, I should show also. What one shows, the other should show, and demonstrate. He is demonstrating his capacities in writing projects. I should demonstrate my capacities writing the projects. So this is like. The reciprocity, and I think it's like, of course, uh, we have all this uh, strata, social, state, uh, but this uh, basic thing are still important, and only through this you can deconstruct all the institutional construction. You said this, this, uh, this deconstructing is rather interesting. That is the kind of the main point. Somehow. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> because I could go on talking like yeah. with you for like for should, hours and hours we? and hours. So should we finish <laughs> this uh, Just, yeah. online? Because, yeah, okay. I think it might be difficult for people to watch when there's too much conversation yeah. behind the camera. Yeah. Yeah. So thank you again. Thank you. It was a pleasure.